Hey folks, Lester here, and I am actually crossing the highway. Yeah, this is pretty foolish of me, but I want to show you all something. The Trinity River, uh, at a view you never get to see. It's beautiful here. Give me a second or so. Let me turn my camera around. So this is a really nice time of day to show you guys the Trinity River from a different vantage point than what you normally see it there at Longhorn Lester's. So I'm on the highway that leads from uh, Longhorn Lester's to Plum Grove. I'm headed back towards Longhorn Lester's now. And I thought I'd just kind of swing by here and give you guys a view of the river without having all the trees that block your view. Um, as much as I love the trees there behind the shop down the high ridge, they do block the view of the river. Over here along the road, though, they've taken all the trees out. And you can just kind of see the full magnitude of how great this river is. Just what a, an amazing river. It's at a really good depth right now. It's about average. It was it got pretty low this past summer with all the drought. You can see here they've done some recent construction trying to find a way to do something to stop the erosion along this roadway. And there's some old construction right there that obviously didn't hold up <laughs> for too long. But um, no, I just telling Jamie, I've never shown you guys any other view than the one behind the house there. And so this here is the mighty Trinity River. So we're at five weeks old today. And that means it's time to start introducing hard food. And we're going to mix that with our soft food. And so this will be the very first time we've done this. So let's see how it goes. All right, so we've been feeding three cans of food three times a day for a while. Today, though, we go three cans of food mixed with a little bit of crunchy food, a hard food there in the same, you know, mixed along with the soft food. So we're going to have to put these out and see how this goes. Y'all give me a moment. All right, here we go. Here we go. Come on. There's one. Come on. All right. There's two. Hey, Holly. Good morning. Hey, Moose. Come on, Bear. There's three. Come on. Here we go, Pugsley. Come on, Wednesday. Sweet girl. All right, come on, Rocky. All right, come on. All right, everybody over here. Come on, all babies over here, look. Come on. Come on, puppies. Come on. Everybody come over here. Look, I got food. Oh, they just want to love me. Oh, look at oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh-uh. Don't don't bite my legs. Come on. Come on over here. Come on, little ones. Come on. Come on, puppies. Look, there's food everywhere. Come on. Hey, you too, over here. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. What are you guys thinking? Holly, get over here, baby. Come on, Holly. Come on, Holly. Come in here and eat, baby. Come on. Y'all make some room for Holly. There she goes. There we go. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Come on. Don't be shy. Get in there. <laughs> yeah, it's looking pretty good. So you really won't know how much of the dry food they're getting until they're finished eating. And then you'll see how much is left on the plate. But at five weeks, their teeth are developed enough to eat uh, hard food, dry food. A lot of people start a week earlier. They just water it down more. But uh, what they do is you, you try to get them off the wet food as fast as possible because it's so expensive. I mean, hey... In the world that we live in, all of our cat and dog foods are expensive. But 
especially the wet foods. So what I'm noticing here is they're actually taking little bites of the dry. And if you notice, they're, they're kind of spitting some of the dry food out along the way. <laughs> they're trying to work. Oh, my goodness. You're making a big mess. They're trying to work around the dry food, which is normal. Very, very normal. Because it's just a different texture in their mouth. They're not used to it. And so they're like licking around it. But this is definitely a phase that they have to enter and it's going to start saving us a lot of money. Can y'all see that? Yeah, that would be from a puppy bite. I've gotten bit on my lip, scratched on my face, and yeah, that's from loving with puppies. That's for loving on puppies. the girls down to the river this morning and uh, man we're just still talking about all of the really neat discoveries that have come out this week through things hey careful over there uh fiona oh my gosh fiona hold on you know one thing that baffles me is when we're talking about smithfield which is right up the road here at the historical marker and all, and we know it was a staging point where thousands of troops coming out of the north unloaded by steamboat and made their way to that field to begin their planning and preparations for the assault on Galveston Bay. How in the heck did they travel up <laughs> these banks? Because I know that even though this was, might have been the 1863, 1862, whatever, almost, well, 150 plus years ago, this has not changed that much as far as the terrain here. The topography of the land has not changed that much. And I know that as far as you can drive that way and as far as I have traveled that way on boat, on my kayak, there's not much of a place to, to land. Now, there is a sandbar about four miles down but that meant that if those guys would have unloaded on that sandbar or in that area then it would have been a five mile hike back over here to smithfield now that may not have been a big deal in those days and five miles may not have been much at all but to imagine those boats pulling up alongside here somewhere and those soldiers having to get out by the thousands and march or find their way up these hills you know, carrying their muskets and their lead and gunpowder. Wow. It's fun to think about, y'all. It's fun to think about. And sad to think about. Really, really sad to think about. And then I think that what intrigues me a lot is to know that the European countries supported the South in their war efforts. Yet... Yet, they remained neutral. As far as diplomacy goes, they were a neutral party. They refused to acknowledge the, Southerns, the southern states' um, independence from the, from the Union. Yet, they did support the South in their war efforts with supplying them with materials. All in exchange for cotton which was worth its weight in gold. And then to find out that whenever the Confederacy succeeded from the Union, all of these folks cashed in their money 
to use con to change it. They can they converted it to Confederacy money. However, several years later, when the Confederacy was defeated and, and, and all that ended, all of that money was worthless. Think about that for a minute. That kind of reminds me of like a modern day, let's just say cryptocurrency. I know nothing, guys. I'm not one who knows about Bitcoin and all that kind of cryptocurrency and whatnot. But wouldn't that be something if you were the kind of person who believed in a certain kind of currency? Please be careful, ladies. Guys, you can't stop them. You can't take the sense of adventure out of them, okay? You can't chain them up and leave them pinned up while you come down and so don't, let's not make this about that. But what if I was to take any dollars or any kind of currency that I have and I convert it into cryptocurrency or Bitcoin or whatever. And then at some point, that Bitcoin currency becomes worthless. I can't expect to ch change it back for my American dollars. <laughs> And that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. All of these southern states who declared dependence, independence from the north, and they cashed in all their money and exchanged it for Confederate money. And now, when the war's over, they found themselves without money. Gosh. And so it may, they may have had the paper, but it was worth nothing. I'm, there's just so many things that I read about yesterday. Anyway, I, I know, I know what you're saying. Lester, I'm a little bit bored. I'll come here to see animals, Lester. Well, there are some animals right there who are doing something very naughty. They're walking around in the washout, which I don't like. But for some reason, they find that area to be quite intriguing. They all seem to be fine. No one's, you know, falling off in there and can't get up, can't get out. No one's being sucked under by whirlpools. And I don't see any alligators. inside now and check on the puppies and see how they did with their food see how much of the dry food they left y'all come with me let's see this together and i promise you that christy is gonna oh my goodness y'all look how did you do it how did you do it i am very impressed that's really good they got almost that entire plate there and most of that. So that's three cans of the wet mixed with some little bit of dry. Oh no. Oh, have y'all gotten yourselves trapped? How'd you guys get back there, sillies? Come out of there. Come out of there, silly willies. Come on. Oh my goodness. Let's let Christy in. All right, Christy, you can come in back in now. Chrissy's been waiting outside the whole time. Come on, baby. Come on, Chrissy. Like I'm oh my goodness, she's so excited. Hello. Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.